Hello everyone and welcome to another very beautiful chess game of Bobby Fischer and this game is also one of the most beautiful chess games of Bobby Fischer in the database and in this chess game Bobby Fischer is playing with the white pieces and his opponent is Edmer Madness and Madness was a strong chess player he represented United States in the World Junior Championship in 1955 and became the second place and also he drew with Boris Spassky in that tournament and Spassky was the winner the famous Boris Spassky although Madness became Grandmaster in 1980 long after this game so this game was played in 1957 in the United States Chess Championship. So as you know, Bobby Fischer won that championship and became the United States Chess Champion at a very young age. So this game was played on December 30, so almost in 1958. Anyway, Bobby Fischer has the white pieces and Madness is playing with the black pieces. Fischer starts the game with playing e4, d6, d4, knight to f6, Knight to c3. So we have the priest defense by Madness. g6. Bishop to g5. Bishop to g7. Queen to d2. h6. Attacking the bishop. Bishop to f4. c6. And after this move, Bobby Fischer castled in the queen side. Queen to a5. King to b1. g5. Bishop to g3. Knight to h5. Attacking the bishop, bishop to c4, b5, bishop to b3, knight to d7, f4. And Madness finally captures the bishop. Knight takes on g3, h takes on g3, damaging the pawn structure but activating the rook. So we have g4, e5, d5, f5, knight to b6. Queen to f4, e6, and Fischer captures the pawn, attacking the bishop, and white is a pawn up. Bishop to f8, f takes on e6, bishop takes on e6, attacking the queen, queen to f3, and madness castled in the queen side. Knight to h3 by Fischer, madness played, rook to g8. So in this position, Bobby Fischer played queen to f2, of course. If something like knight to f4, that would be a blunder. We have bishop to g4, attacking the queen and the rook. Queen to d3, bishop takes rook. And black is winning the exchange out of nothing. So after rook to g8, we have queen to f2, and then knight to c4. And probably Bobby Fischer anticipated this move, so that's why Fischer captures the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes on c4. Well, actually, knight to c4 was a very annoying move. So in this position, of course, capturing the knight with the bishop was the best move. But let's play a silly move. Let's say rook from h to f1. This is indeed a very silly move. So what was the threat in this position? Why knight to c4 was a very annoying move? So we have knight takes on b2, and if king takes knight, bishop to a3, king to b1, queen takes on c3, and white can't really defend the checkmate threat. White is getting checkmated. So this is why Fischer is getting rid of the knight. Bishop takes on c4, b takes on c4, opening the b-file and planning to activate the rooks and attacking the king so this is the plan for Edmer Madness king to a1 rook to d7 rook lift knight to b1 rook to b7 c3 rook to b6 rook to d2 and king to d7 and also black wants to activate the other rook so Fischer played knight to f4, bishop to e7, and rook takes on h6, rook to f8, queen to f3, rook to a6, threatening checkmate. So a3, simply defending, 
and Madness Plate, Rook to B8. And it looks like Black is doing a very good job. Black is more active, at least at first it looks like that. But Fisher made his calculations and Fisher played Knight takes on E6. After F takes on E6, White has a killer attack. And this is the key moment of the game. So Bobby Fischer played a very beautiful move. So can you guess the next move of Bobby Fischer? What would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? Bobby Fischer played rook takes on e6, sacrificing the rook. And this was the killer move. Well, Madness, of course, didn't capture the rook and he played Bishop takes on a3. Well, obviously, Madness considered capturing the rook, but that would lead a force checkmate. So if king takes on e6, then queen to g4, king to f7, e6, king to f8, and then queen to g6, and black is getting checkmated, and there is no defense. So this is why Bobby Fischer played this incredible move, rook takes on e6, but we have bishop takes on a3. Fisher simply captures the bishop with the knight, and then king takes on e6, queen to g4, king to e7, rook to f2, and rook to e8, allowing king to escape. Fisher played queen to g5, king to d7, and then rook to f7, King to c8. And can you guess the move? Well, Fisher simply played queen to f5, king to b8, and then queen to d7. So after Bobby Fisher played queen to d7, Madness resigned. And this is the last position of this magnificent chess game by Bobby Fisher. And Black is getting checkmated, and there is no defense after this position. And let's play a silly move. Let's say queen to b6, then queen takes rook. And there is no defense. Black is getting checkmated, as you can see. The one and only way to prolong the game is queen takes on a3, b takes on a3, rook takes pawn, king to b2, rook to b3, king to a2, rook to a3, king takes on a3. And there is no defense, as you can see. Queen to c7. That's checkmate. So this is why, after Fisher played queen to d7, Madness resigned. So this was the famous game of Bobby Fisher from the United States Chess Championship in 1958. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.